pre-recorded from a yoga studio you've never stopped at. It's Malignant Bear, featuring me, JD Grossmitz. Hello everyone, in this quick look video we're checking out the game Soulstone Survivors. This is a new action roguelike, uh, Bullet Heaven or Reverse Bullet Hell, whatever you prefer to call it, in the same vein as Vampire Survivors. Uh, no, real shock there. This came out in early access a couple weeks ago. I've been playing it and enjoying it and wanted to put out a little quick look on it. This game does some interesting things in the genre, so I thought it's worth checking out. Uh, it is a little bit more expensive than some of the others in the genre, but I think it's kind of worth it for the increased production value and just the amount of content and features that it has. So, we're going to be joining a run in progress, uh, just so we can skip kind of the slower early game, and we can check out what's going on in it. So we'll jump in and I'll talk about the kind of in-game UI, and then we'll actually show some gameplay. And then at the end of the run, we'll go back to the main menu and talk about some more of the changes in the game. So, without any further ado, let's check it out. So here we are in the pause menu. And I want to draw your attention to the top right of the screen where it says, right away, our time alive. So we've been in this match here for 8 minutes and 50 seconds. And your time doesn't really matter because you actually have objectives in this game. So we have to eliminate the Lords of the Void. We've already killed three of them. There's five total on every map. And every time you kill a set number of monsters, then you get to summon a lord. You have to kill all five to finish the game. So time alive is really just how long you've taken to do that. Your objective is to kill all five of them. Right now there's um, only five lords in the game. Uh, there might be more. It, it seems like there's only five though. They spawn randomly. Uh, the big thing with them though is they drop crystals. And you can see here our tip. Each map has different resources. So the crystals that the bosses drop are one of those resources. And they always spawn in a set order. It's uh, red, blue orange, green, purple, I believe, and use those crystals for the long-term progression. In-game, though, we can see some of our attributes here. So they're all pretty self-explanatory, but there's nice tooltips to explain what they are, which is good, because bad UI can make or break a game. But pretty basic stuff, you know, do more damage, crit more, crit harder, have more air of effect, all that fun stuff. And these impact all of my skills. Skills, which you can see down here at the bottom, so I'm playing a character, the Paladin, right now. There's a bunch of different character classes, and each class has a different starting skill and different attributes as well. Based on their attributes and starting skills, um, they also have different skills that they can or can't use. So for example, one of the characters is a Barbarian, and he cannot use any skill types of magic. So we can see here, for example, Blades of Light, my starting skill, has skill types of Holy, Swing, Frontal, and Physical. There's different passives that you can get that impact specific skill types. So you want to try to plan your build around that. So you can see here I have another, you know, frontal, physical type of skill, another holy skill, another frontal skill, physical, holy, physical, blah, blah, blah. So you can see I'm planning my build based on that. Over here in the bottom left, we have all of these different skills and passives that we've gotten. And you can see they have different levels as well. So for example, this one is common. A slight increase to my chance to multicast. This one was uncommon. 30% more damage on that one skill. And this one is rare, so 45% more damage on that one skill. Different levels of skills, different levels of passives. Increase the RNG in the game, but add a little bit more depth and planning to go into your builds. Every character can also dash, which we see here. Some characters can get bonuses to their dash as well and modifiers based on their skills. All right, so let's jump in and get to killing. So, we can see here there's a lot of stuff going on on the screen. We're moving around. Uh, this one is also a twin stick. You can see there's a nice big crosshair there. It got bounced around. Uh, obviously, all of the red things on the ground is enemy attacks. Uh, the bigger effects are mine. Or any blue circles, if we see them, those would be my skills as well. We've leveled up right away, which is good, so we can see the level up screen. All right, so we only get a choice here between some passives. Um, we want more area of effect. We'll go with that. Right now, there's only five maps in the game, um, and within those five maps, the only real difference seems to be the resources, the drop in them, the tile sets, both of the map and the monsters, and the music in them. There's only five maps, but there are some variations within those maps, some different difficulty levels that you can play them on. We'll talk about those later on. Right now, we just want to focus on killing. Not much focusing to do, though. Um, I will say you are very powerful in this game. Um, specifically because there's a lot of powerful skills like this. So you can see, even though we already have six skills, sometimes we can still randomly get more. 
So you can pick one, and then if you want to, you can replace one of the skills you have. We won't, though. I like the skills that I have. So we'll skip and get a power up instead. So this is a lucky, lucky draw here. We have all rare powers. Uh, I want to attack faster. So cast frequency is attack speed. You can see our dash is there, right above our, or right under our character rather, in the middle of the screen, and then also in the bottom left. So you can see the cooldown on that. Now uh, you are very powerful in this game, uh, right from the get go. I have yet to fail a run of this, and of course now that I've said that, I'm sure we'll fail this one. But this is a a good power fantasy type of game. It's just lots of fun, mindless killing, and the runs are pretty quick, especially once you start to figure out the broken builds. Uh, you can complete runs in sub-15 minutes, and there's achievements for doing them in less than 10, so it, it definitely seems very possible. Okay, here we have the first boss that we're seeing on stream, at least, or on, on video, rather. <laughs> so used to that. So we got randomly the Plague Lord boss. He's summoning up Plague stuff. Still leveling up as we fight him. You can see all the enemies, though. They have little health bars um, as we're damaging them, and they get little icons for different debuffs that they might have. So we've killed him. We want to collect the green crystals that he dropped. Be sure to avoid all the other crap that's around it. Eliminate monsters to summon a lord. Um, not interested in any of those skills. Increase your area modifier. Yes, we want more area of effect. So there's lots of little crystals around. So the yellow ones are our health. Um, then we naturally get other ones for killing people. Those are minor soul gems that go into kind of our long-term progression that we'll see. And then the crystals we get from killing bosses, same as the, with that. And then there's the green health crystals sometimes as well. There's a decent amount of enemy variety in the game, I think. Um, not so much in terms of look, like I said, there's they reuse some of the same tile sets. But in terms of what they do and what you need to do to avoid them, there is a fairly good amount. Let's see. Attack even faster. As you can see here, we can even mouse over our skills in-game. We can see what they're doing, so this one is very fast, less than a second. I've had some builds that were so broken that the entire screen was covered the entire time I was playing uh, by just instant casting skills. I was that fast and had that many modifiers. So again, real power fantasy. It feels pretty good. I like the fact that it's a twin stick, so you have a little bit more agency in what's happening. Apparently missed some gems at some point. Ah, oh, the orange one. That's That would have been bad. We're getting close to the end, though. Keep killing stuff, keep bouncing around, collecting things, leveling up. Later on, you can unlock the ability to re-roll your level ups, as you can see, or banish specific powers that you don't want to see anymore. Don't have any of those yet. Uh, even faster. It's like we might have capped out on how fast we can go. Which is admittedly quite fast. Uh, some skills will buff allies, which is interesting. Uh, there is no multiplayer in this game as of yet. I don't know if it's planned. Uh, there are some skills that summon various, you know, pets and monsters and things to help you. So they buff those as of right now. But I think this game would lend itself well to multiplayer. There'd have to be a lot more enemies on the screen, but... It's almost there. Let's see the final boss, then check out some other stuff. Fire giant. He uh, unsurprisingly shoots fire out. Maybe there is more than five bosses now that I'm thinking about it. It doesn't seem like it though. Uh, there's definitely not that many. Alright. Uh, epic skill, why not? Not that it matters because we won. So when you win, everything dies, and you get all the stuff already. And you get portals that spawn whenever you finish. Um, the red one is some sort of boss rush mode. Uh, the purple one is an infinite level, so if you just want to keep going and just see how powerful and crazy you can get, or you can just end the level with blue, which is what we're going to do.
So whenever you finish a level, you can see all of your stats and details, so how much damage your skills did, the different soul stones that you collected, the materials, the prestige you've earned, all of your stats there, your final skills there. So we've leveled up the Paladin. Every character in the game has different levels, and we'll see what that unlocks in a little bit. There's more details as well if you want to see that. But we'll head back to the menu. All right. So here's the character we just played as. And back in the menu, you can see the specific stats that he got and the different runes that you can equip. So we don't have any of those yet, but I'll showcase those later on. But here's all the different characters in the game. There's quite a few of them. And like I said, each one has different weapons, so you can see that determines their starting skill. Some characters can also craft additional weapons, which changes their starting skill and some of their stats. So for example, we have a melee-focused character, the Barbarian, a caster, the Pyromancer, the Hound Master was all about explosives, I liked that one a lot. I haven't done the Spellblade yet, but it seems pretty self-explanatory. And some of these I haven't unlocked, so we can't even see what they are. But uh, I did a run as the Sentinel, this was all arrow-focused, arrows and projectiles, and then we just did the Paladin. So you can see they have some other unique skills, and these are the skill types that they can actually use. So, no projectile types or explosives for the Paladin, but he gets plenty of other things. Here's all the different soul stones that we have, and those can be used here at the blacksmith. So if, for example, I wanted to craft the other weapon for the Houndmaster, I could do that. And you can see it gives us a different starting skill here than the one that he had, and some different stats. And those take some of these materials that you can collect by doing runs. Outside of that, another long-term progression thing is the skill tree here. So pretty standard stuff, you know, you can go a little faster, have an increased pickup range, higher cast frequency, blah blah blah. And these ca cost not only the soul stones, the minor ones, but also these different colored ones as well. The big thing that you want to do here is get up to 50,000 like we just did to unlock runic power. And that increases the runic power of all of your characters by one, and this is a permanent thing. You can see here, now it's going to take 10 of these vile soul stones, so we can't increase it any further. But that unlocked this new thing, which is runes. But of course we don't have any runes unlocked, uh, because this is the other long-term progression thing in the game. So you have to earn different achievements and do different things to get these rune stones, and then you can only equip a certain number of them. But they sometimes buff specific characters, I'm assuming, based on these. So for example, this one you have to do reach level 60 with the Paladin, or finish a match in 12 minutes. And then you have some more common ones here. You know, kill 3,000 elite enemies. You can only equip a couple of those at a time, but plenty of things to work towards and grind towards as you play the game. Lots of achievements in the game right now as well. And more coming, I assume, because not every character has weapons, and they can always add more achievements as well on top of that. Last but not least, we'll check out the actual different maps. Like I said, there's only five of them right now, but there's still a decent amount of variety within that. Because you have the curse system, so you can make the matches harder for yourself if you want to. And as you do that, if you successfully finish these curse missions, then you unlock higher difficulty levels and new curses as well. So that's how you get some of the other achievements and some of the more long-term progression. Like I said, the base game is pretty easy, which is good. It's a nice introduction to it to kind of get you in there and having some fun. But then you can ramp up the difficulty as you see fit to help you unlock further things for the long-term progression. I've been having a lot of fun with this. Uh, I think there's plenty of depth to it. Uh, the art style is pretty good, runs pretty well, um, I will give it that, some of these games do not. And I think there's plenty of things to see and unlock and check out here, and potential for them to add more as well. Uh, these devs are also working on a more traditional roguelike game, um, with this within this same universe, same art style, same characters I would assume. Uh, they put this one out first, I assume to kind of draw up some support for that, and prob probably some funding as well, uh, because this genre is quite popular as of right now. Uh, this one's getting some pretty good reviews, uh, although I will say this is $10 as opposed to the usual uh, $3 that a lot of the games in the genre are going off of the Vampire Survivors model. That said, uh, I think it's pretty fun. I've certainly been enjoying it, and I would recommend checking it out if you're a fan of the genre as well. Like I said, I've been enjoying it, and I hope you enjoyed this quick look, and until next time, have a good one.